Hey guys, welcome back to Kim Star Reviews. What we're taking a look at is the latest from Bad Cube. This is part of their old timer series, which is their masterpiece scale toy line. This is OTS 14 Steamroll. So you can see he's next to official masterpiece figures here. We've got Sunstreaker, we've got Optimus Prime, we've got Inferno, and let's get a measurement on his size because he's right next to Sunstreaker in terms of that. He is just under seven inches tall. Yeah, I would actually put him a hair under seven inches tall. He's six and three quarters. All right, so as for this review, it's gonna be a review. We're gonna take a look at this figure in both modes, what it does, what it doesn't do, and I'll give my opinion on it. The transformation video is gonna be separate. Don't want this to be 30 minutes long. You don't want this to be 30 minutes long. And plus in a separate transformation video, I can do a little bit more, go slower, talk you guys through it. It's not a hard transformation or anything like that, but it's been requested by multiple people to see it. Car to bot, bot to car, give you an actual transformation video. Outside of that, this has been sent from Bad Cube for review. They asked me to shout out Big Bad Toy Store, which is carrying this product, as well as a ton of other things. Both Transformers and not, actually. Big Bad Toy Store is huge. Um, you could get it there, of course, or from my site sponsors like TF Source, The Chosen Prime, Ages 3 and Up. No matter where you get it, MSRP is going to be about the same. And the customer service is going to be good. I haven't shopped anywhere that's just horrible to date. You know, obviously I have my biases and places that I like to shop, people that I like to support. But for the most part, a lot of these big retailers, they do you right. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at a picture spread of the accessories and get started with this review. Alright, so taking a look at the alt mode, one thing I will say is that I don't know how well it's going to capture on video, but it's actually the same color as the box back there. It's a nice cherry red. It looks a little bit light through my LCD, but... Be assured, it's, you know, about the same color as the Takara version as well. Alright, so, it's pretty much what you'd expect out of a contact. Um, let's take a look. See if we can't get a little bit lower. The underside's not bad. So, taking a look at that, not a lot of visible kibble or anything like that. On the underside itself, it looks pretty clean. All four wheels roll. I mean, you can't expect too much more. Um, no rubber on the tires. And as for gimmicks, it's got the doors that come up. It also has the trunk that comes up. And it does have these fog lights as well. So, just gotta move the wheels out of the way. And from there, there are two pieces, little levers down there, they're gray. You just press up on them. So, I'm going to put that back down. And then this is me pressing on that gray lever. And it just naturally kind of rises up. So, from there, put the wheels back. So, there's that. Let me go ahead and put that down put that back down as well sorry if you guys hear my dog barking in the background but we just got home and she's going kind of nuts just excited there you go there's the alt mode make sure I'm focused and also if you were wondering about weapon storage the weapon itself alright so there's the blaster handle in barrel over make sure it's upside down like so and there's a female peg on the inside there. It pegs in and goes in between these two these two white pieces here. So make sure gotta fit a little bit, but there you go. There it is from the back side. So still has its same clearance and everything like that. We'll still roll and yeah, it's a good time. That's the weapon storage. No ride. Taking another look at his height there. Now that I've got him all straightened up, honestly, he looks to be about six and a half inches tall. A little bit shorter than I said at the beginning, but I'd say a solid six and a half. Give you guys a roundabout here.
and just for the sake of it, taking a look at some of the detail, or lack thereof, because this is more tune accurate. Alright, so we'll take a look at, since we're up here, and kind of zoomed in, some of the gimmicks that go to them. So, the shoulder cannon here, you can actually change from side to side, just move that, and it's just on a swivel, so side, side, alright? Now, he does have the interchangeable faces, as you saw in the picture of the accessories that come with. So, to get this changed out, a little bit difficult for me. What I have to do, I can't just pull it out, even though it goes in with a peg. So what I have to do is take this back flap here, put it down, and I honestly just use the drill. And you can see the peg there, and I just push it out. So, all right, and boom. And from there, you see that female hole there. It just pegs in the new face. It just pegs in so darn deep that it's hard to get out with your hand. All right. Then put that back, as well as get that back. And you know, just kind of get everything back in order. And now just taking a look at his articulation. So the head, it's not on a ball joint, and I wish it was. It's kind of hard to move up and down, but it does have a neck that just has an up and down swivel. Mine's pretty tight, but it's neat. It's nice that he has a neck, but it's so short that you really don't see it, even when the head is looking upwards, you know? Just in terms of handling, it would have been, you know, a little bit easier with a regular ball joint, but it's cool. Ratcheted shoulders. It does have the additional shoulder swing. Double jointed elbows, as you can see there. Wrist swivel. Fingers that move. All four are there. No articulation in the thumb. 360 waist swivel. Good thigh swing, front and back. Hip skirts move with it. 360 thigh swivel. 90 degrees. At the knee bend and ankle tilt for days. And of course, ab crunch. So that's pretty cool. And what I like is that the back can actually move with it. So. Overall, fun figure to play with, and I will say that his joints... And now kind of putting things together, I'm giving you guys an example of what can be achieved with his articulation. So, let's take a look at, you know, pretty standard pistol pose here. I know some of it's going off screen, but it was meant for that front shot. Even from the back, it looks good. I just wish there wasn't, you know, like that area, there was something to cover it or something like that. All right, now let's take the weapon and we'll go kind of the same. Turn that into a run pose. Well, that's more of a harsh walk. Let's see if he can balance on one foot. Copy off a streaker there. Come on, I, I have this feeling he could do it. Go below. Give it a little bit of an angle there. And boom. Got a run pose. Pretty cool, huh? Then from there, 
the weapon out of his hand. Just do a common Iron Man landing pose, superhero landing, whatever you want to call it. And I know I pose figures a lot, obviously, with the photography thing and stuff like that. But so many of them, as you can see, transition into each other. At times, you know, you could take three or four shots in a couple of seconds just because of how similar some aspects of the poses are. All right, let's give it that angle instead. And I'm not even really utilizing his ab crunch there. If you really want to get it deep, let's go there. Bring the knee in even more. Make sure to plant that foot and And let's actually tilt the head up. There we go. And that's what I'm talking about. So just some poses there showing off his articulation. All right, and don't want to forget one of the gimmicks that uh, Sideswipe is known for, especially in toy form, even more so than the TV show because every modern Sideswipe toy comes with this stuff, is his ability to have tools in place of his hands. So for that, let's take a hand for example. All right. And they just peg on, so no worrying about disassembling the hands or anything like that. Do the other side, and if you notice, I switched over the side of the cannon too. Again, that's really easy just to switch over. Oh, Got to turn that before, and remember to open the fingers. That's a part that I forget a lot. And instead of showing every single accessory, the pictorial does have pictures of all of them. But for this, we'll just use the drills, you know? Pierce the heavens. Get him looking up. And I really wish that this was a ball joint. It'd be a little bit easier just to bring his head up. And they're decent, decent made, decent plastic. I'm not huge on the whole hand tools thing with him or most other bots whose hands change out in the things. It's just not a look that I like. I like hands as hands or hands with guns in them. That's just me, but it's cool that he has them. It's cool that they're easy to swap out. And again, check the full review and gallery for pictures of all of the different accessories like the stampers and things like that. All right, so closing this out, this has been Bad Cubes Old Timer Series 14 Warrior Steamroll. Honestly, I adore this figure. It's a really nice toy. The engineering's fun, the articulation's great, and it's just got a nice smooth feel to it, whether it be the plastic itself, the joints, you know, it, it's just fun to play with. Now, do I think this is going to be the end-all, be-all sideswipe? I guess I'll preface it by saying that I think that this is leagues better than the Takara version in terms of looks and just how it plain fits with the new direction of the official Masterpiece Transformers. It looks way better next to Sunstreaker, way better next to Inferno, you know, even stuff like the Make Toys products and things like that. I kept those out of this review because it's a bad cube thing, but pictorial, I've got it next to everything. Um, yeah, I think it's loads better, but end all be all, no. Reason being is, one, the materials used. It's a very light toy. It's all plastic, and it's fun. It feels sturdy. It's well built. I didn't get any instances where it felt like anything was flimsy, going to break, etc., etc. It's well put together, so have faith in that. But when it comes to the official line and things like that, whether it be just more dense plastics or the addition of die casts and things like that, there's just more of a heavy, solid feel, and 
I believe that masterpiece collectors for the most part, and I can't speak for everybody, but I'm just going off, you know, the vibe that I've gotten from the fandom, they want a little bit more in terms of materials used and things like that, especially when you're playing these higher prices, like a hundred bucks plus for, um, you know, a car bot or something like that, that kind of size. But you know, it for what it is, it's very, very, very good, looks great, plays great, and yeah, but even outside of materials used, I almost cut myself off there and forgot but it's kind of the fit and finish of it okay so you've got these areas like the knees or whatever for me it's fine okay but for perfectionist they don't want to see that gap and stuff like that for me not as fine the back you know if there was something to cover it or something like that to where you don't kind of just see that you know, yeah, of course we don't display our toys backwards or s and things like that, but even from the side or whatever, I guess I gotta say the side because to me the back is actually fine. But that side gapping and stuff like that and just all of that you see, you know, it's what it is. You can unscrew the cannon so that it doesn't show in the windshield while it's in alt mode, but it'd be nice if you didn't have to do that and there was a bit of a better, I guess, hiding spot for it. I'm not an engineer, so it's not like I can think of anything, but it'd be nice not to see that so blatantly right in the middle of the windshield without having to, you know, modify any part of it. Even though it's as simple as unscrewing a screw, you know, we just want things perfect off the bat. So, you know, those are kind of nitpicky things, but at the same time, it's an area to where I think possibly Takara or another third party or whatever could come in and maybe, you know, still have a market for themselves, even though this is a really nice figure. But with those nitpicky things, I'm going to give this a solid 7, maybe 7.5 out of 10. Good. Damned good. But not near perfect, which is what I would think, you know, that 8 to 10 range is leaning more towards. But anyway, this has been my review, my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you like this review, of course, like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching. I will see you guys next review and be on the lookout for the transformation video, as well as the full review where I break this down, you know, in written form, as well as, I think it's like going to be 20 to 30 pictures, the gallery as well. That'll be on kumasawa.com. Again, Thank you. See you next time.